December 9th, 1880, met with Blake this evening for the first time. He stood in the shadows to prevent me from getting a clear look at his face. What a vile disease this is. He is a rich man with a cursed condition, but this does not prevent him from trying to better his situation and that of his comrades at the colony. December 11th, Blake's proposition is simple. He wants to move off Tanzia Island and relocate the entire colony just north of here. He has purchased a clipper ship called the Elizabeth Dane with part of his fortune and asks only for permission to settle here. I must balance my feelings of mercy and compassion for this poor man with my revulsion at the thought of a leper colony only a mile distant. April 20th, the six of us met tonight. From midnight until one o'clock, we planned the death of Blake and his comrades. I tell myself that Blake's gold will allow the church to be built and our small settlement to become a township, but it does not soothe the horror that I feel being an accomplice to murder. April 21st, the deed is done. Blake followed our false fire on shore and the ship broke apart on the rocks off Spivey Point. We were aided by an unearthly fog that rolled in, as if heaven sent. Although God had no part in our actions tonight, Blake's gold will be recovered tomorrow, but may the Lord forgive us for what we have done. Words from Patrick Malone's journal, one of the six conspirators who contributed to the deaths of all those aboard the Elizabeth Dane. Blake was a wealthy captain who had leprosy and was sailing with his crew aboard his clipper, the Elizabeth Dane. They were sailing near the coast of the United States on April 21st, 1888, at night in a dense fog in search of a place to establish a colony near Antonio Bay. Blake led the ship to a beacon in the distance. However, they were soon to discover that it was a false beacon. The ship crashed into the rocks and sunk, killing everyone on board. The group that were responsible were six of Antonio Bay's founders. They plundered the ship, then they went on to fund the church in the town of Antonio Bay with the gold they had took from the dead. One hundred years later, Father Malone finds the journal that belonged to his grandfather after a large piece of stone falls from within the church. Malone discovers that his grandfather was one of the plunderers of the Elizabeth Dane. In the coming days, a mysterious glowing fog would roll in on Antonio Bay, first to be discovered by three fishermen who were on their boat doing some late night fishing. They discover that the fog contains a clipper ship and unknowingly the ghosts of Blake and his crew, wishing revenge on the 100th anniversary of their deaths. Blake and his crew claim three fishermen's lives. Now they are on a hunt to claim three more lives, one life for every founder of the town who conspired against them. Claiming these three lives and returning their gold is all that will stop these vengeful undead spirits. The ghostly crew of the Elizabeth Dane have numerous supernatural powers, which include telekinesis, enhanced strength, and being able to temporarily possess and manifest through the dead. They were also responsible for a piece of debris from the Elizabeth Dane pouring water from it, thus destroying Stevie Wayne's radio setup in the lighthouse. Along with these abilities, they seem to be able to appear and disappear at will in the fog. The fog seems to allow them to teleport to where they wish, as long as there is fog present, they can appear or disappear as they need. They like to knock on the door of the building that their victims are staying in, waiting to be led in by them, to then come out of the fog and take them. If their target does not answer the knock, they will proceed to smash their way indoors. Captain Blake wields a sword, while the rest of the crew are armed with meat hooks and knives. Although they are ghosts of a doomed sea vessel, they share more similarities with zombies. When Stevie is fighting for her life on top of the lighthouse roof, we can see an exposed, green, rotten and worm-infested face 
of one of the crew members. In the end, the crew of the Elizabeth Dane complete their mission on the 100th anniversary of Antonio Bay. They claim their gold, and as they do, the fog begins to recede. At this point, they have their gold, but they have only claimed five lives. Slowly, the fog creeps back into the church as Father Malone, the grandson of Patrick Malone, one of the town's founding fathers, realises this. Captain Blake's crew appear in front of him, then Blake from behind Malone, slashing his sword, decapitating him, thus completing their goal. Captain Blake and his crew of the Elizabeth Dane can now rest. Although, maybe not forever. Should you ever see a fog bank roll in over the bay, always be wary of what it may contain. Personally, I love the fog and I was always fascinated by the story behind the ghostly crew who are out for revenge on the town that profited off their deaths. Carpenter stated in the Making Of documentary that he and Deborah Hill took inspiration from seeing a fog bank near Stonehenge and a true story from American history of a colony that lured ships to their deaths with false beacons to later plunder them for their riches. I thought it was cool that I had some real history behind this ghostly crew. The fog is definitely up there with the thing for my favourite Carpenter film. If there was anything you noticed I missed out about the crew of the Elizabeth Dane and Captain Blake, please let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, then would you kindly leave a like, and for more content from myself, then subscribe to join the club. Thank you very much for watching, and good night.